How you everybody doing on YouTube, BrewTube, uh, Brew Your Own For Life here. Got an update. This is long overdue. I mean long overdue. I should have posted part of this a month and a month and a half ago and the other part a good year ago. But uh, finally got some time on my hands. Got a little project I built I want to show everybody. So uh, here it is. Finally uh, motorized my grain mill, as you can see. Or maybe you can, hopefully it's bright enough. Um, I've had the motor for a year and a half. It's one of those from Surplus Center. Um, Lovejoy Connections. I had basically all the materials here. Uh, the 2x4s, my neighbor guy does construction. I got the uh, particle board and everything else uh, had to, so I built the enclosure for the motor completely out of it and uh, lined everything up and I put these in so if I have to pull the motor for some reason I just slide it back and also for the motor you can get in here and see I don't know if you can let me turn it around oh yeah I put it on wheels and casters there. I put in a quick connects on the motor. So I do have to take the motor out and replace it. I can just unplug it instead of having to cut wires and everything. Made my own little, I guess, control box. I had a set. I had the materials. I figured I might as well use them up. Powered with an old extension cord. So let's kick it on and see how she goes. I haven't put a decals up here yet for forward or reverse but there's forward it's going pretty good reverse and then uh, down here for my bucket I put in some blocks in the base so I put it push in my bucket automatically sets it right where I need it and then I have a piece of material hanging down. That's just Velcroed up just to help direct the grain and keep the dust down. There's the original base for the uh, barley crusher. So I will uh, pull the lid off the control box there and show you how I wired it up. So here's how it's wired. At my cord coming in, I've got the green and the white from the motor coming into my power cord. The black from the power cord is going to the center post of my switch. And I had a blue and a black wire coming from the motor. Um, I already had some blue for extensions, but I didn't want any more black wire in here, so I had some yellow. So the blue wire is coming from the motor, one side of my capacitor, and then the other side's going to one side of my switch. Same for the, the yellow, which is actually black. So one side of the capacitor, the other side going to the switch. Now the capacitor wiring, there's, there's two ways to do it. You can do it this way, which to me I thought was the easiest because trying to put both wires on one of these little terminals can be a little tough to get it in there and crimped right. Some you can see like the blue would come into this one and out of the same one there wouldn't even be a plug here same as the yellow coming into one side and out the same side. Uh, that's perfectly fine too. But this just is so is just easier. Um, so but that's basically how you wired it. Um, like I said it's unplugged so I ain't worried about getting shocked. Now for the other part of the video. I got my state fair results quite actually quite a while ago. As you can see I got two second places. Uh, the blonde ale scored 35. I got a second for that. My uh, chocolate milk stout which I want to talk to you a little more about here shortly scored 34. I've got a second. And my wheat beer I brewed, it really wasn't, it was traditional wheat. I added orange peel, lemon peel, uh, 
Citra, Soriachi Ace Hops. It scored seventh, but man, it's a good drinking beer. But what I really want to talk to you about was the uh, chocolate milk stout. Um, I had kind of a little confusion what category to put that in. Uh, and I know when you're entering beers, you can put them in what category you think is the best. But I wanted to make sure I did it right. So Tom Roder, I think that's how he said it, had a video of some of his results from a competition. And he made a chocolate stout too. And chocolate was entered under the spice, herb, and vegetable category. Because chocolate is considered a spice. So I filled out my tags for that. Um, I just wanted to make sure I had them in the right category. I didn't want them saying, well, it's a good beer, but you should have entered this or should have put it here. Um, so, when I go down and went to the Iowa State Fair to drop these off, I sat my beers down. The guy was looking at the tags, and he came to the chocolate milk stout. He had a little a weird look on his face. And I said, what's the problem? And he's like, well, I think these are in the wrong category. And I'm like, no. I've done a lot of checking uh, the guidelines and it's got real chocolate in it. It needs to go in this category. Well then another guy heard us talking who I find out in a little later was the superintendent of the whole homebrew competition. Uh, he says, what's going on? And I explained it to him and he said, no, no. We always put those beers in a specialty. I said, well, no, it's wrong. He said, no, it ain't. He said, I'm the superintendent, and every, for years, these beers, everything with chocolate goes into the specialty beer category. It's always been that way. And I said, well, you're wrong. I said, chocolate is a spice. We argued for like five minutes. Finally, I told him, I said, you got a copy of the guidelines. He, he went to a drawer and snatched them out all cocky, threw them on the table and says, I'll show you. And he opened it up to specialty category, and he's reading some of the commercial examples um he's uh, uh um uh rye um 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 and his face just went blank so i snatched the guidelines from his hand and i said i'll show you turn it to the specialty beer category it lists young's double chocolate stout it lists rogue chocolate stout i said it's going in this category and if you move it i said you're doing it wrong and the guy just stood there, just blank look on his face. And one of the other gentlemen that was in the back that was helping, you know, the, load the beers and get everything ready, <laughs> looked at him and says, I'm glad somebody read the guidelines. But uh, I'm pretty happy with that. You know, two seconds. Um, I don't know how other fares work, but it looks like I got my two seconds. Looks like just for entering... I got a bronze, I assume that's for the wheat beer. And then I got two silvers, I assume it's because I got two seconds. They throw in two silver ribbons, I really don't know. But uh, the one thing I was really disappointed with this year was the fact that uh, they typically uh, list uh, best to show. You know, that pays 100 bucks and nothing. The wine category listed best to show. But the beer, I don't know if it was that same guy responsible, but somebody dropped the ball. It was not very good. Um, and some of these score sheets, let's see if I can find it here real quick. I think, I think it's the wheat one. You know, I'm going to show you this real quick. I don't know if you can see this, but shit, it, it, it looks like it's written by a third grader, you know. And, and with my wheat beer, as I'm looking at the score sheet on that, I told you it had orange peel, lemon peel, soriachi ace, and citra hops. Um, both judges, because there's two judges that you know, fill out two sheets for each beer, both of them said they tasted raspberry. One said it was an overpowering raspberry taste, and the other one said all they could taste was raspberry seeds. So... I don't know. I'm, I'm not too impressed with the judging staff at the Iowa State Fair. Um, maybe I'm going to enter more next year. We'll see. But with remarks and results like that, they need to either get people that actually know what the hell they're talking about or change something. But this is uh, Brew Your Own for Life. 
and uh, it's finally got an update going, so we'll see you next time.